Welcome to the Feeling Loudly podcast, a show about the power and magic of emotion explored through the lens of astrology, divination, and art. I'm your host, Jana. I'm an astrologer, a tarot reader, Akashic Records reader, poet, and witch, and I'm here to help you feel your feels. Hello everyone, happy almost full moon in Scorpio. It's exact tonight at 5.48 p.m. Mountain Time. That's 4.48 p.m. Pacific. And this full moon in Scorpio, directly opposite our sun in Taurus, is at 4.17 of Scorpio. And so this is especially loud for folks with fixed placements in the early degrees of the fixed sign. So anywhere really in like the first decan of the fixed sign, so like zero to nine-ish degrees, of Scorpio, Taurus, Leo, and Aquarius, you'll be getting a pretty sufficient little energetic punch maybe or um, a moment. It, it Honestly, for some of us, it feels a bit like a gut punch because this full moon is forming a 90 degree angle, aka square to Pluto and Aquarius. And so a Scorpio full moon squared by Pluto is a very, very, very Plutonian event. And for those of you who are a little less familiar with what that means, Pluto is a planet that brings us into the depths of our psyche and our fears and a planet that can show us our power if only we have the courage to go toward the parts of ourselves that we might be afraid of. And so this is a full moon where something is being highlighted within us that might be scary to look at. It might be something that we have kind of neglected or something that we've chosen to overlook or unsee, or it could be something that we're intimately familiar with, but that we just haven't quite come to terms with. And this is an opportunity for integration and for us to practice acceptance around parts of ourselves and potentially other people that we find particularly challenging or icky or shadowy or difficult to cope with. Pluto can also be a planet that draws us into our survival instincts. And when we have Pluto squaring the luminaries, the sun and the moon, it can be a time where we might feel we might be triggered. We might experience triggers or we might uh, go into some of our coping mechanisms in order to deal with what feel like really emotionally challenging situations. And so if you're noticing visceral things coming up, if you're noticing kind of shadowy behavior from other people, manipulative, controlling behavior from other people that is very much in line with the astrological energies that we're seeing in this moment. Um, I am thinking a lot about the drama triangle and probably that's because the aspect that I'm looking at, the the T-square that Pluto is forming to the sun and the moon uh, just look like two people that are opposite one another and then this third figure that's forming a 90 degree angle to each of them and there's a sense of disruption in all of these relationships and tension in all of these relationships and it's causing me to think about how the drama triangle tends to operate which is something I actually talked about in my three of swords episode a couple weeks ago if you want to go back and listen to that where I dived in a bit more on the topic of the drama triangle Um, But it's something that I would be cautious of within yourself and within your relationships around this time because there's a tendency that we have when we're in conflict with other people and especially when that conflict feels really charged uh, to kind of cast other people into roles and often that looks like hero, villain, victim and to get really entrenched in our views and that's more likely to happen during this time because of the plutonian shadow that's being cast over this full moon and because it's a scorpio full moon there's already this plutonian charge to it pluto is the modern ruler of the sign of scorpio meaning the sign of scorpio tends to take on a lot of sort of plutonian traits and can work with a lot of plutonian material And Pluto kind of acts as this archetype that um, expands upon our understanding of the sign of Scorpio. But the modern, or I'm sorry, the traditional ruler of the sign of Scorpio is Mars. And so the ancients looked to Mars as an influence on Scorpio and as a sort of ambassador into that sign's energy. 
And today, Mars is sitting at 24 degrees of the sign of Pisces, almost 25, 2451. So Mars in Pisces is the traditional ruler of this full moon. And Mars in Pisces is forming a sextile to Jupiter and Uranus, which just formed a conjunction this past weekend on April 20th. And that was a huge event. And it's something that tons of astrologers have been talking about because it happens roughly every 14 years. And in the sign of Taurus, it's really marking this point since Uranus entered Taurus back in 2018 slash 2019. And this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is really punctuating that journey so far and showing us all the ways that we've evolved since then over these past like six years give or take and also all the growth that's yet to be done and all of the potentials that we may not quite understand yet and for a lot of us especially those of us with big fixed placements this was quite the shake up like a lot of aha moments a lot of rapid changes sudden changes upheavals you think about Jupiter being this amplifying energy that expands what it touches. And so when it comes into contact with Uranus, it can expand chaos. It can expand upheaval and revolution and um, create a lot, a lot of like quick movement and unexpected changes. And we're seeing, of course, a lot of violence on the world stage at this moment. We're seeing uh, Palestinians being further isolated in Rafa and attacked. And there are all sorts of other things that are happening that I think are painting a clear global picture of how this is manifesting and the way that that tension can erupt and get bigger in scary ways. Um, I often think of like explosions when I think of this kind of energy and especially with the Martian influence. And that's not to say that that's something you need to be worried about, but I'm just saying like sort of archetypically, it's what it reminds me of, whether that's like a symbolic explosion or a literal one. And so looking today at this Mars sextile to Jupiter and Uranus, which are still quite close together, like pretty much right on top of each other still. Um, it feels like there's a conversation happening here between our instincts and our desire for change and the actual change that's unfolding around us. And so we have this opportunity to kind of like nudge something forward that maybe has like, maybe seeds were scattered over the weekend. Maybe there was upheaval and disarray that was created um, without our, without our choice, <laughs> maybe like, you know, it, it was done for us and sort of like universally caused there was change that occurred and we didn't have a whole lot of say in it, but now we do have some degree of agency in the choices that we make in the aftermath of those changes. And so if you're someone who noticed a lot of really radical personal shifts occurring this past weekend and th through this week you'll continue to notice the impact of that conjunction in a big way and you know on and off in the near term future it will continue to be up for us to a degree um, but again the height of that transit was on April 20th and so this full moon is talking to that and it's it's kind of asking us like now what do you see about yourself that you couldn't see before and now maybe what do you see about your life that you couldn't see before? For some of us, that's meant kind of ripping off the band-aid and seeing truths that we maybe didn't feel ready to see or having conversations we didn't feel ready to have or having to kind of face up to situations that we didn't necessarily feel prepared for, but that our guides and our just the circumstances of our lives have told us it's time to go. So, and I don't mean that literally, like it's time to go as in leave, but for some people that might be true. This is a Scorpio full moon where there is an energy of death that's very present and death in a metaphorical sense, like a time when there might be endings that occur, a time when we're really being asked to release and to exhale and to surrender control, which is not an easy feat when we have a Pluto square to our sun and our moon. Pluto squares, 90 degree angle again, can cause us to grip really hard onto something that we're wanting and that feels like life or death to us, that feels very intense. And it can really kind of force, or at least nudge, not necessarily force us to confront the fear that is beneath that behavior. 
So if you see yourself grasping for control, especially over other people, it's a time to really sit back and breathe. And if you notice that pattern within yourself, like you notice like, oh, I'm really grasping for control right now. I'm really trying to like control other people's behavior or choices or manipulate them to get the outcome that I desire or like whatever. Um, If it's not people, it could be like seeking control through different avenues. That's a really, really good cue for you that there is fear that's present that needs to be looked at. And fear is a healthy emotion. It often shows us what we care about. Um, But sometimes fear can also show us the growth that we're afraid of or the parts of ourselves that we're afraid of that aren't even necessarily scary. Sometimes when we go toward that fear and we start asking it questions, we can discover these nuggets of wisdom and it can really relieve that tension within us and help us to see a situation much more clearly through the eyes of love and trust. And, you know, trust, I think, is a big keyword for a lot of us. I pulled my trust card from one of my Oracle decks for my week ahead spread, just like my personal spread this week. And a combo of like the energy of trust and courage feel really necessary right now. And we can look across, if we want some degree of relief during this full moon, to our Pluto opposition in Leo. And so while we don't have any planets in the sign of Leo, Leo does complete this fixed square. Again, we have a 90 degree aspect from Pluto in in Aquarius to our moon in Scorpio and our sun in Taurus. And so the only fixed sign that isn't represented here is Leo. And when we have a big T-square like this, we can seek relief often through the opposition, through the incomplete angle, through the side of the square that's missing. And today that is Leo, a solar sign, fixed fire that brings us into courage. Leo represented by the lion. Leo is a sign that demonstrates a lot of courage and a lot of warmth and creativity and a sign that can bring in levity and laughter and play as a way to lick our wounds when we're struggling. And so this might be a beautiful time for you to engage in play or to find ways to laugh. I had to like consciously laugh at something that happened um, that kind of shook me up. And I, when I started laughing, I was like, ah, I'm good. I'm, I'm solid, I'm good. And that laughter can be incredibly healing in moments when we feel really disoriented and fearful and when we're seeking control. Sometimes the act of laughing can actually loosen us up and help us to see things from more of like a wider perspective, which is actually quite Aquarian. And so this axis here, I think, is helping us. And um, it's, it's, again, a point of relief that we can seek and we can do that consciously. We can bring in Leonian activities like moving our bodies and playing and laughing and getting creative, like painting, dancing, listening to stand up, making art, um, doing anything that feels engaging and heart centered. And another thing that's coming up here for me is that turning toward the soul and asking the soul questions and treating the soul as your ultimate guide when it comes to making difficult decisions is the way. And that's probably always true, but it feels particularly true right now because of this Plutonian influence and because of, again, that missing leg in Leo. And the soul is in evolutionary astrology, the type of astrology that I primarily practice, the soul is represented by Pluto. And that's confusing to a lot of traditional astrologers and like Hellenistic astrologers and folks of, of different traditions who don't tend to work with Pluto as much. Uh, but in evolutionary astrology, Pluto is a place that is deeply, deeply, deeply connected to the soul and to the psyche. And it's a place that we can go to find our truth and to find our guide and to find actually a sense of calm and sort of like the eye of the tornado when we're going through a lot of upheaval and confusion. When I'm 
defining for myself when I'm like pulling tarot cards or working with the records or whatever. Um, sometimes I'll often I'll kind of move between consulting different energies. Like I'll ask my guides collectively, I'll ask specific guides, I'll ask deities, I'll ask planets, I'll ask my ancestors. And today I just sat down and was like, I only want to consult my own soul. I only need the truth that is within my own soul at this moment. And everything became so much clearer. And I felt this sense of calm and knowing that I think I was really distracting myself from when I was seeking guidance from like all of these different guides and all these different places. And I'd listen to like a YouTube tarot reading and I was just feeling very kind of like disperse and it felt like my, my sense of like grounding and truth was hard to come by. And so when I tuned into my soul and I asked, I want to hear from my soul, what does my soul have to say? It became quiet and clear and calm. So that might be an exercise you want to go through, whether that's through divination or through just kind of inner exploration. This is a really beautiful transit to go inward and to do a lot of soul seeking and a lot of soul questioning and exploring. And again, if you can bring in a Leonian flair to that process and make it a little bit fun, <laughs> Uh, I think that that will serve a lot of us very well, considering this can be a pretty heavy, heavy lunation, and it's going to echo for a bit. And it's also kind of carrying with it the energy from our Taurus Scorpio eclipses, which occurred before this, these last two sets of eclipses. Um, our last eclipse on the Taurus Scorpio axis was this past fall in October. And our previous like you know 18 months before that were occurring all over the Taurus Scorpio axis and it was a very 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 intense era and for a lot of us we may still be recovering from stuff that went down during that period and this could be a full moon when you experience some degree of catharsis and relief around the stuff that occurred throughout those Taurus Scorpio eclipses for you. So it would be worthwhile to reflect back on what was going on for you then, on what you've let go of since then. For many of us, it came with a lot of like earth shaking events, uh, especially in intimate relationships and in our sense of stability and grounding and all sorts of stuff like body stuff, money stuff, intimacy stuff all sorts of topics related to Taurus and Scorpio and in turn to Venus and Mars and Pluto were coming up throughout that era. And this full moon in Scorpio is in many ways kind of like, okay, you've, you've moved through it and now you have an opportunity to exhale and let go of a lot of the stuff that might still be clogging your spirit. And for some of us, that might be suspicion. That might be difficulty trusting, coming back to the trust message from my own Oracle cards uh, it might be us projecting the past onto people that are currently in our lives or seeing the worst in people or seeing the worst in ourselves. So if you feel like a monster, if you feel like a bad person, if you have thoughts that are really self-hating and self-flagellating throughout this transit, know that they could be coming up because they're showing you that that's something that you're ready to part ways with. And that sense of relief and release around identity feels like a really big deal right now, especially since we have so many planets, um, or not so many anymore, but we have, we have two planets technically that are in the sign of Aries. And then we also, and that's both Mercury, which is currently retrograde and Venus. And then we also have Chiron, which is still pretty tight with Venus. And we have the North Node, also in Aries, which is really close to Mercury retrograde. And Mercury will get super, 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 super duper close to the North Node on the 25th, right before it stations retro or stations direct that day. And so there could be really important conversations that are occurring this Friday on the 25th when Mercury comes into contact with the North Node, um, it's not going to be exact exact, but it is going to be at the same degree, so 15 degrees 
And, um, you know, <laughs> it could bring up a lot of like provocation. It could bring up a lot of honesty, a lot of like long ignored honesty and conversations that need to happen that can help us get clearer about what we desire and what we want. And I feel like this full moon in Scorpio is helping us to get more clarity on that ourselves. And so whether those conversations happen with other people or whether that's between us and our creator or whatever, our journal, um, a friend, a therapist, it feels like honesty is coming to a head this Friday and it's being ushered along by whatever understanding we cultivate throughout the Scorpio full moon and whatever insights come through, ideally from our soul and ideally not from the part of ourselves that want us to feel like a piece of shit. And that might be a very real narrative that's in your brain again, because this Plutonian transit can have us feeling some really intense feelings and can have us internalizing um, beliefs about ourselves that are simply not true or at least are exaggerated through the lens of our own self-criticism. So projection, all-time high, people potentially projecting stuff onto each other and onto you. So being thoughtful about our energetic boundaries during this time, doing cleansing rituals, doing burning rituals is another great Leo expression. If you have an old belief, an old relationship, an old identity, an old characteristic, a pattern, an addiction, something that you really need to let go of, this is a great time to set that shit on fire in a fire safe bowl and to do a ritual of release so that you can get some cosmic support in that process. This is an incredibly cathartic full moon. And the Plutonian influence, again, might bring us into really charged emotions before we can get to the point where we're ready to exhale. But know that that is coming and that that opportunity is available to you. And the more you can kind of take a little Martian action and nudge it forward and like keep the momentum going from this weekend's transits, the better equipped you'll be to experience the type of catharsis that's waiting for you. Okay. I'm going to move into our three card tarot reading for this lunation. And we're looking not just at today, since full moons are not just like a single day event. We're looking at lunar cycles, which tip, you know, typically we're talking like two weeks from full moon to new moon or a month from full moon to full moon. But we can also look six months ahead. We can look six months back. We can look at a year. So I would follow what feels right for you intuitively um, I have a feeling this one's going to echo for a while, but we'll say for the sake of simplicity that this is super focused on the next two weeks. So our overall energy or our anchor card for this woman is the world reversed. The world is actually connected to all of the fixed signs. Their glyphs are almost always represented on the world card, Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, Aquarius, and the world is about completion, about graduation, about moving into a new cycle after completing another one and returning to zero, returning to the fool. It's the last card of the major arcana. But in the reverse position, there's a sense of incompletion and a sense that something is not over with, that we really like may be wanting something to be over or we may be wanting to feel like we've done what we need to do and that we can move forward but there's something like a pebble in our shoe that feels like it's stuck there and it's continuing to bother us and it's continuing to nag at us and so I do have the feeling that resolution may be a little bit delayed and again that could come when Mercury joins up with the north node and stations direct on the 25th. And I think that the first couple of weeks of Mercury direct when Mercury is still in its post retrograde shadow phase will be bringing a lot of integration for the difficult and maybe inspiring and exciting stuff that went down throughout this retrograde. I know for a lot of us, it's been a hard retrograde for others. It's been like inspiring and interesting and all of the above. So whatever has been most prominent for you throughout this retrograde period is likely to surface and to get the space that it needs to come into focus so that you can start making choices propelled forward by your newfound insight, maybe about what you desire, again, since we're talking Aries. And so a Mercury retrograde in Aries brought in a lot of questions around our identity and around our passions and our desires and our wants 
considering the fact that Mars is the ruler of Aries and Mars is connected to our desires and connected to our bodies and like the animalistic side of ourselves. We are all animals at the end of the day, but like Mars really brings us into that in a big way. And so your impulses, your desires, your wants, what you're moving toward, your motivation, what moves you and also your ego, all of that stuff you've likely gotten some degree of insight into throughout this retrograde period, which began on April Fool's Day on April 1st. Um, And as Mercury stations direct on Friday on the 25th, that's going to come into focus and we're going to be called probably to make some choices and to say, like, now that I have this information, am I going to bury my head in the sand and pretend it's not there? Or am I going to start making choices that are self-honoring and choices that really honor this new version of myself that I've become aware of? And so the world to me right now is feeling quite temporary. It's feeling like this is something that we are going to turn around, but that it might just not happen on the full moon tonight. For some of us, it will, um, especially if we take, you know, aligned action and close something out for ourselves and make the choice to experience catharsis. Uh, But for others of us, there will be this sort of like lingering taste in our mouth that something is not over and that there's more to the story and that there's more information to be gleaned and that we might feel like we're going in loops for a while as we sort of chew on all of this information and all of this emotional stuff that's come up. Our challenge for this transit is the hermit and so speaking of soul the hermit connected to virgo the hermit is a sign that for me often means going inward and consulting the soul it's in this deck i'm using the modern witch tarot in this deck we see this hooded figure they're wearing a dress they look very witchy and they're in this sort of like dark room and it has a sort of like gothic feel to it and they are, looks like, looks like they're either opening or maybe they're closing, potentially closing their laptop, which has been sitting on this little like nightstand of sorts. And at first it's interesting. I thought they were opening it up, but they're, they actually appear to be closing it. And to me, that brings me back to what I was saying about kind of closing out from exterior or external voices that might be influencing us in a direction that is not aligned with our soul. Even if they're well-intentioned, this is the voices of other people around us. This is outside input that alters our perspective for better or worse or somewhere in between. And this really feels like a time when our challenge is to go inward and to consult ourselves truly and to get very, very, very honest with ourselves about what our truth is, regardless of what other people think about it, regardless of the input that we're getting from our environment or from the people who care about us or don't care about us, regardless of what people have to say, can you go inward and can you listen to your own truth? Can you sit down with yourself and can you have an honest conversation where you don't bring in the hypothetical perspectives of all of the people around you? Can you sit down and can you give yourself the space to hear what you want and what you need and then move from that place. That's not an easy challenge, but it is a very worthy one. And to see the hermit in the challenge position tells me that we have what it takes to do that, but we have to create the right environment to do that. And so that might mean tuning out of social media, tuning out of conversations with people, not like opening up to other people's perspectives or simply saying like, I'm not looking for input right now. That might be, that phrase might be your best friend right now, especially with this Plutonian action. Because again, other people are likely to be attempting to influence us in a big way. And, or at a subtle, in a subtle way or at a subtle level, they might be attempting to influence us. And that influence is motivated by what they think is right and what they want. And it's not because they're evil or because they're bad. It's just because they're a human with an ego and with their own desires and their own perspectives. And so at this time, again, like tuning out as best you can and setting boundaries with people and setting boundaries with yourself so that you're not seeking out advice and input and voices and noise that clouds your perspective and causes you to lose sight of your own soul and your own desires. 
And finally, our gift for this lunation is the six of cups reversed. And I also had the little affirmation, uh, like insert in this deck pop out with it, which says you are a badass being full of life, love, and possibilities through this deck. May you find a path to your best self. And that felt important to leave because, again, we do have these planets in Aries and we have this Pluto stuff going on. And there's a sense that for a lot of us, these transits and our circumstances are bringing up a lot of like negative self-talk and a lot of skewed and distorted self-perceptions. And so affirming yourself and opening up to affirmations is really important right now. It's really important to return to the soul and to try your best to like let shit flow off your back, like water off a duck's back and to not internalize the perceptions that other people have of you or your own perceptions of yourself. To try your best to separate that from the way that you identify yourself as a human. And one simple way to do that that I really like is to stop using I am statements when talking about characteristics and instead say like I behaved in this way or I have a tendency to act this way or lately I've been acting this way. Because when we create a sort of attachment between our identity and a particular characteristic, we're sort of like like writing that as part of our fate. Like, I am this kind of person. It has this permanency to it that can be actually act as like a stuck belief that then manifests and festers within us and causes us to keep making choices that are in line with that particular way of being. And that's part of the reason the reverse can be really effective, right? Like affirming ourselves can be really effective, saying like, I'm badass, I'm full of life, love and possibilities. Um, but so often we end up getting stuck in the reverse mentality where it's like, I'm weak, I'm like shitty, I'm like loveless, like whatever, fill in the blank, I'm not enough, like I'm sad. And these become part of our identity to the point that they continue to show up in our reality because we keep making choices from that perceived identity. And so again, affirmations feel really important and cutting loose any of those like I always, I never, or I am statements that feel like they're actually keeping us trapped. Like I'm seeing an image of like a bear trap, like trapping someone's foot or ankle. And it feels like that's how some of these outdated beliefs are operating for many of us. They're keeping us stuck in place, unmoving, stagnant feeling like we're powerless to our circumstances when really we do have the power to free ourselves. We have the key. It's just like hiding in our back pocket. And like the password is to, to get to that is, is like us letting go of some type of identification that is really causing us harm. And then the six of cups reverse coming through as the gift feels like a lot of this is stuff from our past relationships or from relationships that have begun to feel so familiar and old that they're sort of operating to like keep our old neural pathways alive. And so this could be that people in your life see you through a negative lens or see you through a specific perception that reinforces these beliefs that you have about yourself This could be people from the past that we've grown so attached to that we're not recognizing that the relationships are not serving us anymore. Or this could be versions of ourself from the past that we still feel very connected to. And at this time, we're able to recognize that they're not supportive and maybe that they're not true. Maybe there's an element of self-deception that goes into maintaining these relationships with other people or with ourselves. Um, The Six of Cups reversed is often about getting stuck in nostalgia and like seeing something through rose-colored glasses or just like not being able to stay with reality because we're so stuck in what was that we can't come to terms with what is. And so this is a time when I think we're really feeling like affirming who we're becoming and even who we are right now is helping to free us from the tendrils that are attaching us to the past. And again, that could be more internal work, like focusing on releasing these old narratives and beliefs and identities, or it could be external stuff, like also freeing us from the relationships that are keeping us stuck 
and like beholden to um, playing a role that is outdated for ourselves, playing a role that is in line with who we used to be, but not who we're becoming and recognizing the ways that we might be holding ourselves back and that our relationships might be holding us back too. And so that might be a painful gift. It might be sort of like an ouchy revelation or recognition, but I feel for a lot of us, it's stuff that's been building up for a while, especially throughout these Aries Libra eclipses. And if you've had relationship troubles and stuff that's come to a head, stuff that's come to the surface where you realize like, I just don't feel that I can be fully myself here And I feel like I have to like maintain the status quo in order for this to work. It might be time to like do what you got to (laughs) do over time and gradually and um, probably with the help of the universe since again, we're going through some big transits and our hand might at times be forced even when we don't feel ready for that. Okay, y'all, that is all I have today. Hoping that is helpful, supportive all that um if you would like to book a reading with me and if you're interested in exploring nodal stuff specifically like north node south node stuff and plutonian stuff i offer a cosmic karma reading that's a 60 minute evolutionary astrology reading where we focus on the nodes and on pluto and it's a really really ripe and deep reading that can help uh, you know, kind of show you some of the material that, that you may have a blind spot around or show you some of the entrenched patterns that are available for healing, if only you're able to see them with a bit more consciousness and compassion. So that reading is available and I book 60 days out. And if you're interested in tarot, Akashic Records readings, both of those are available too. I also specifically offer recorded tarot readings that you can purchase and they get delivered within 72 hours or like three business days. And those are really great if you want like a little bit more um, bang for your buck because it's just me talking and we don't chit chat. I just kind of get straight into it. So those are available through my link tree below and then live readings with me are available on my website and you can find that link in the show notes below too. Wishing you all a cathartic full moon, sending your hearts a lot of love and grounding, and I really hope that you find your Leonian fire throughout this transit and are able to experience relief. Bye.